necessarily black, but they were interested in science. And so because of that, um, they moved the science magnet there. I was going to be like, well, good. There you go. Yeah. Bring it to them. Yeah. And that's... No. Nope. Yeah. I, I think some of the some of the schools have started doing the lottery thing, right? Where it's just like it's you, you can apply, and then they just randomly pick people to try to, <clears throat> I guess, even even the field a little bit, so that it's not you know a an individual or a board picking people, you know, or accepting people on that. So. Yeah. Is that really a thing? <laughs> I've heard. I've heard people. That. Anyone who applies, they just pick your name out of a hat. That seems <laughs> like a bad. <laughs> you could get a bunch of duds, and I'm not saying like, whatever your skin color is, whatever. But if you're trying to get a smart school and you just have a couple people sure that are not base, so smart, there's probably some baselines where it's like you got to have mostly A's or whatever. But um, yeah, yeah. One hopes. I mean, to do that. goodness. Yeah. I just, that seems so yeah. weird that that, like, happened. That yeah, was it, was, weird. it was, it was, it was strange. Uh, like I said, that, that incident actually happened once I was already out of there. Um, and, and now I guess I don't think about high school that much. But thinking back right. to it, just with us bringing it up, and I know I made the joke about all the cliques just being separate rooms of, of pasty white dudes. But now I am remembering <laughs> a lot more, uh, <clears throat> I guess... Diversity. Uh, I mean, I, I definitely remember some people. I don't remember names. I think I blocked most of that. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm seeing faces. We uh, weren't there for very long, yeah. so yeah, and and which is weird to think about now, right? A lot like, of people were just. It, it wasn't a great experience, and high school in general is not. <laughs> well, but that's what's weird. So I, I I leave there and I go to a different school, uh, and I feel like at the other school. Uh, I had a lot better experience. I was actually, oddly enough, just uh, talking to my friend who I've known most of my life now um, before I came here, and we were, oddly enough, kind of reminiscing about just the past. And, and uh, yeah, I, I had a lot better experience once I switched schools, uh, just because I think I was more in my element, uh, because despite being a pasty white person, I'm... You know, a quarter Latino, which isn't a lot, but I grew up mostly around Latino people, and I definitely feel like I have a better comfort level when I'm surrounded by like my own. I'm doing air quotes, guys. You can't see that, <laughs> but yeah, when I'm when I'm in that element, yeah, when the I people think around you make you feel like your family, yeah, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot more of my comfort zone, which is just it is what it is. I think because, uh, but. It definitely, coming back to the other school, which I oddly live like a mile away from now, <laughs> um, you know, just being in a more diverse situation, uh, I, I feel like the first years of high school, there was a group of people that I hung out with, but I didn't necessarily feel like they were my friends, uh, and going to the new school, I, I ended up finding... Finding a group, and they are definitely, um, and it all wraps back and connects. So they're, um, right, my first year there, they started doing media tech, uh, which is basically like students produced the announcements and other fun shorts and things, uh, and I immediately was like, that's where I want to be, and they're like, well, you'll have to wait till next year. Uh, so I was part of that for its second year, um, I was regularly an anchor for the morning announcements because a lot of the kids uh, just didn't want to do it, which I always thought was weird. Um, and I, I got known as, like, the guy that tried to make it fun. And, like, you know, we, we didn't have a teleprompter, so we'd have, like, copy. Um, and I would kind of memorize the gist of everything and just wing it. Um, and I got to do, like, goofy stuff. Like, I was the go-to, like, oh, well, we need... We're doing something for if these kids take the toss test or whatever standardized testing it was. Like, if they pass, they get to go to Six Flags. So, we're going to do an ad for that, and we want you to be goofy in the background while the principal reads this very straight thing. Cool, I can do that. Um, I made a documentary um, that I had a team, and they just 
I don't think they got what I was going for, which I also love, but uh, you basically <laughs> invented some sort of supernatural being that's supposed to be haunting the school, and we're getting all these first-person accounts of it, but nothing's scripted, and no one's, like, an actor, and we're asking them, we're, like, telling them, like, think about a toothbrush, and we're asking them, like, a set of ten questions about toothbrushes, and then, you know, the next person, like, think about chocolate pudding, or there was, this just sticks out in my head, because one, we were under 18 at the time, I think the person that we interviewed, but, um, the, this one woman was interviewed about getting her nipples pierced, and so, you get these bizarre, like, it, it was all, you know, made in the editing room, and this is... 99, 2000, like, the first probably commercially available uh, nonlinear editing. Like, yeah. we were on Avid. And just, you know, creating this story in the editing room and this just really bizarre... Uh, I think we actually had to fight to get it aired because that's just, like, how bizarre it was. Like, everything I was doing, like, we had to fight to get it aired because, like, another thing I did... Uh, where they're like, we're making commercials, like just a commercial for whatever product. And at the time, I was a DJ. Like, I had, you know, two turntables and a, a battle mixer set up in my room. And I was like, what about a thing that, you know, it, you flip a switch and it makes your life better? And so we have this kid who's a freshman, so, and he's kind of a small dude, um, getting in all these situations where, like, there's bullies beating him up and something else is happening to him. I can't remember the specifics, but... The, you know, I just slide the crossfader on the, on the mixer, which I, you know, shot, and all of a sudden someone else is getting beat up and his life's good, and, <laughs> and they're like, well, it kind of promotes violence, so I don't know if we can air this, uh, so. Sure. Yeah. No, it but then <laughs> To show somebody being bullied? <laughs> well, but it, it was basically like, uh, the, the kid, a part of his life getting better, uh, and, you know, classic not wanting to do any heavy lifting on naming something. The device that makes your life better was really, literally called the Thingamawatsa 2000. And uh, we had printed that out or written it out, and it was covering the new Mark logo on mm -hmm. the mixer. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, so um, when that happens, the kid that's getting beat up drops, like, money. And the, other, the kid that was getting beat up previous takes the money. And there was this voiceover, I'm like, look at that, money for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was just doing really bizarre stuff like that, uh, and surprisingly, uh, allowing it to happen. It was, it was great. We, like, we would accidentally play, not accidentally, we, we would pick songs that we wanted, like, we would pick songs, maybe not even thinking about the content, and, you know, as long as they didn't have cuss words in them, they were basically greenlit. And, yeah, you can, you know talk about like drugs without cussing and we weren't definitely weren't supposed to be playing that to the whole school at you know second period but it was happening um and we went on a field trip to the liberal arts academy to see their setup and in their booth they had a list of all the rules and like we just sat there in a circle hugged around it like Yep, we break that one daily. We break that one daily. Like, yeah, like, like if AISD knew what we were doing in this place, they would probably shut this program down. But, uh, they know now. Yeah, for better or for worse, I, I think they ended up doubling down and giving that program a lot more money. Uh, I went back a couple of years after I graduated because I was working on something, and I was going to see my teacher to see if she could help me out with it, and she was no longer doing that. There was someone else in charge of the program, but... One of, my, one of my favorite things about like low budget filmmaking is the problem solving that goes on, mm -hmm. and that's the same type of thing is you know happening in high schools and wherever. Where it's like you've seen this thing happen before, you know, in a big budget film. There's no way you can do it the way they do it. How do you do it? You know, or you just get to set and something's just not the way it should be, and you have to figure it out. So I think I, that the problem solving part of filmmaking or media making to me is is great, especially. Like you said, making something and editing, there's just so much joy in taking a thing that's broken that will not work the way it is and figuring out how you can change it to make the story you need to make. I like the idea, especially in like 
current reality television where it's like kind of staged the idea that um, that they have just so much footage and that people outside because there's two different crews there's got to be like well I suppose it depends in the in the like bachelor kind of ones mm-hmm. where it's like more immediate those have to be like curated push there's people on the sides going like she said you look ugly you should go talk to her about it and fa- and making those things happen but like in in like real world where they like f- just filmed for 24 hours straight or like big brother those right. kinds of things and then they just pull stuff and make it look like they're having a fight and, like, you see those things later where they come back and they're like, that whole thing wasn't a fight. They yeah. just edited it to be like a... We were we had one discussion about it, never talked about it again. They kept bringing that back. Like, you know. And I was like, oh, that's how they created... I mean, that's how, like, an entire section of, uh, you know, like, television was built off of editing in the after. Like, yeah. what can we do with what we've got? And I do enjoy that. I also enjoy in your story how you talk about the that you used a program that was like the first one that like allowed you to do nonlinear editing. And I was like, yeah, that's great because we take for granted so much of this stuff. I mean, hell, even the even the like the ease of us sitting in my living room right now with a microphone attached to a, a laptop is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I mean, I suppose half the people we know are just putting their phone in front of each other and, and recording it for their podcast every week. But I just mean, like, we take for granted so heavily the kinds of stuff that we have now that, like, when we were kids, we had to, like, rig it together. I mean, thank yeah. God we are old. We are, like, younger than the generation who had to, like, <laughs> tape, right, film, film and shit. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't even imagine. That must have been so hard. Yeah. They forced us to do that in college. When, and it was, you know, what is it, 2004, yeah. 2005, where they were, we're still having to do, like, on a Steinbeck editor, uh, and, and reel-to-reel audio, <clears throat> which was insane. And then so, like, I think two years later, they just threw those out. <laughs> and just like, but having the we? knowledge is so <clears throat> helpful. Even <clears throat> though you never <throat> have to, potentially never have to use it, <clears throat> I mean, in a larger scale, who knows what happens. It's like oh yeah, I be, you know, I, I'm yeah. sure it's all digital now, but I don't know. It's hard to know. Yeah, I, I, they definitely go back and uh, you know, well, grab the original natives right from and not do. I guess they'll do DI now. They um, probably scan yeah. scanning the the natives now, put in digital intermediate and at two K or whatever. It's yeah, I mean, even we were talking about the editing stuff where it's like you can drag and drop like oh the audio's here and the the videos here and it's like yeah we're spoiled now. We, have, I, we are super spoiled now. <laughs> when I was in junior high and high school, I was making stuff with um, VHS cameras, mm-hmm. and our family had luckily two VCRs, so that was like my first way to edit, but they were the same exact VCR. So in order to do like edits, you had, we had to put cardboard between them so the infrared wouldn't see. <laughs> so we'd have to like play, play, you know, to actually cut together something. <clears throat> yeah, the, um, fir- the first thing I ever made was... While I was still at the science school, I was in Latin, uh, and probably the best grade I ever got in Latin was I got a perfect score on a uh, short film I made that was about the story of... I don't even remember this anymore. Crap, I worked so hard on it. Um, it was about Gaul, uh, some Roman emperor convinced the the people of Gaul to fight, basically, these two brothers, so that you know, they could take over Gaul. Uh, and I called it Gaul Rats because I was very into Kevin Smith. Uh, and uh, there was basically <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob going through the mall convincing these two people. And yeah, I edited it that exact same way. Yeah. And there was a, like, I didn't have the ability to do a record scratch, I want to say. But I, there was something where I wanted the music to just stop. And it was literally, I was feeding in a CD player yep. uh, into the camcorder, and when the music was supposed to stop, I pulled the RCA out. Yep. Uh, See, so yeah, and that was, that was a lot of fun. I, I didn't have, that was prior to this other experience, so I didn't, I didn't have a lot of experience, though, you know, my mom was a 
theater person, you know, theater and, and